If you're learning a new programming language, an array can seem like one of the most difficult concepts to learn. If you're using this tutorial to series to learn your first programming language, well, that's crazy. Ah, just kidding. I think I'm doing a decent job explaining all the different data types, so we'll try to tackle arrays. What is an array? Just think about it like this. It's a way to store multiple items together. You can create different variables for everything, but sometimes that's not practical. We'll look at a simple array in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and create our first array. So the first array is going to be something like numbers, and we're going to declare it uh, like this. So we have this array declaration, an assignment operator, and what we're assigning it to. And inside here we'll have a list of numbers. So this is kind of boring, but it does show what an array looks like. We have a bunch of numbers and we can group them together like this. What do these numbers represent? I don't know, maybe employee IDs. So employee IDs that are awesome. So employee 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, and 20 are awesome. Everybody else thinks. I personally like to do something that would have been more fun. So we'll create another uh, array called drivers I hate. And this array is going to contain three elements and they're gonna be strings this time. Now we can write them up and uh, the way we did it right here, but this will most likely go completely off the screen. So most of the time what you do is you split this into multiple lines. It doesn't matter how many spaces there are between these. Um, you can do as many spaces as you want, new lines, etc. as long as it follows this structure. So the first uh, series of drivers that I hate are drivers that turn their blinker on before checking to see if anyone is next to them. I know it makes sense to a lot of people. Hey, let me turn on my blinker before I merge. But it directs everybody's attention towards you. And I don't know if you're ready to move or if you're just saying like, hey, I'm about to be ready to move. So I hate those people. The second category of driver that I hate are drivers that do the speed limit or below and the left two lanes. And then the third category of drivers that I hate are drivers that are clearly on their phones. You know, you've seen these people, either they're driving too slow or they're swerving all over the road. I can't stand them. So if we want to access this array, how can we? Well, we haven't gotten into loops yet, so we won't look at any kind of loops in this tutorial, but we will echo out an array element. For simple arrays like this one, we access the array element using the index. What is an index? Well, it's just a value that's assigned to each element in the array so that it can be called. In PHP, we start at element 0 and move up. In this array, we have indices 0, 1, and 2. Why 0? Well, there's actually a good explanation on that. If you're a computer science student or just have a curious mind, then I'll quickly say that it's because of the way that elements are stored in memory. I'll write an article on it soon and post it to my Medium account you can head over to medium.com forward slash at and within the next couple of days from releasing this video that article will definitely be on there but let's go ahead and let's display this first element from this array so what i'll do is i'll just say echo drivers i hate and then to access the first element remember we need to use zero so within square brackets, after the variable name, we put zero, and this is how you call the first element in the array. So let's go ahead and let's go to our test page uh, as soon as it finishes loading. And there we go, drivers that turn their blink car on before checking to see if anyone is next to them. How about if we wanted to display the last element, right? So drivers that are clearly on their phones. Well, we could just say zero, one, two. So we could say echo, drivers I hate, two, save it, go over hit, hit refresh, and drivers that are clearly on their phones. Just a little FYI, I have messed around with Firefox and Chrome for whatever reason, 
when you do the brake tag on Chrome, it flips it. On Firefox, it does not. So I guess if we want to be diligent and have all this stuff in order, then we could surround all of this with div tags. And I'll just go ahead and copy that, paste it over here, and change that back to two. Now if we go back, hit refresh, it should all be in the correct order. So this should appear up top, drivers that turn their blinker on, and drivers that are clearly on their phones. All right, let's move on. If we want to know how many elements are in the array, we can check uh, that with the count function. So PHP has a built-in function count, and there's actually another function called size of, which is synonymous. So let's go ahead and we'll just copy that so that we can just modify this portion on the inside and we can have our div tags and we can say count and then we just pass the array. So we'll say echo count how many elements are inside this array. So what do you think? Since it starts zero, one, two, how many elements do you think are gonna be shown? It's actually three because there are three elements in here. All right, let's see what size of does. So we'll just replace that with size of, save it, go back, hit refresh, and we should get the same thing once this finishes loading. And there it is. Trust me when I tell you that even though this says three, in reality, this list is a lot bigger. I could write hundreds of drivers that I hate. Well, one thing that you might have noticed is that we have three elements, like we stated, but we're accessing the elements via index, so we can only go up to two. There are three elements in this array, but we start at zero, so just keep that in mind. So let's say we have an array, but don't know how many elements are in there. If we wanted to access the first element, we can do it just like what we've been doing. So echo div drivers I hate zero. But now, what if we wanted to access the last element and we don't know that the last index is two? How could we access that? Well, we could specify a last index variable and all that's gonna hold is just a count of drivers I hate, which in this case will bring up three. But remember, we start at zero, so we're gonna have to subtract one from this count. And this will work in every single situation. And then we can go ahead and copy this and say in between these div tags, I want to call drivers I hate. And right here, uh, how this basically right now says, hey, we're at element two, right? Because count drivers I hate is three minus one is two. So all we have to do right here is pass the last index. So now if we go back over here and hit refresh, we should get this drivers that are clearly on their phones. And there it is. Let's go back. Most of the time you really wouldn't have this extra variable right here. You would just move this expression in between the brackets. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and copy that. And then in between these brackets, we're gonna say count drivers I hate minus one. So now you can see that we're calling drivers I hate and for the index, we're passing this expression. The count of drivers I hate returns three, you subtract one and you get two. So we can go back and there we are. Drivers that are clearly on their phone, same as the one above. I know we just looked at initializing arrays this way, but Arrays can also be initialized with brackets. This was introduced in a PHP 5.4 and was not available prior to that. So let's expand on this hate list and this time we'll go to people I hate. And we'll initialize it by doing square brackets. And this time we will list um, and let's do four elements this time, right? So people that don't know what to order at a fast food restaurant. So that's definitely, I mean, why are you in line if you don't know how to order, especially if you're waiting in line and you come up there and then you start thinking, you should have been thinking about that already. We're in a fast food restaurant for crying out loud. Speaking of restaurants, um, the waiter that ignores us 
for most of the time that we're there. I uh, can't stand it. Just refill my drink. I'm not asking for too much. Uh, as well as the waiter that just won't leave us alone. Just coming up constantly, asking me questions, interrupting my conversation. Just leave me alone. Um, and then, I guess let's go away from uh, the fast food industry or the restaurant industry in general. And we'll say people that blast their music on their phone, speaker, in public. What is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Nobody wants to hear your music. All right, and we can access them the exact same way. So let's go ahead and copy one of these because it has this little div tag. And we'll say in this time, people I hate. And we'll do zero to get the first element. If we hit refresh, we get people that don't know what to order at a fast food restaurant. So what data types can be stored in an array? In PHP, whatever data type you want. And you can mix and match. So we've seen already up here uh, numbers. We've seen fully strings as well as right here. But let's go ahead and mix and match a lot of it. This time, we'll go ahead and we'll create a person. And that person will have some properties. So what are the properties of that person? Uh, that person is going to be named. He's going to have an age. Uh, maybe a social security number, which this is a bad way to store any kind of social security information. But hey, it's a property of the person. Uh, we'll go ahead and store his email address. Uh, his favorite decimal. Fave decimal. And we did another comma right there. And then uh, we can even store a Boolean. Uh, this Boolean, all it references is, is uh, is this person awesome? Uh, is awesome. We can access it just like what we've been doing, you know, so far. We can say, you know, if we want to get the age, we can say uh, echo person one to get the age. But what if we just want to inspect the array? So we'll go ahead and we'll do these little pre tags uh, just so that it formats everything correctly on our screen. And then we'll do a bar dump and we'll pass this person array in here. So it's just formatting everything correctly and then it's passing this var dump. Um, and it, you'll see basically what var dump displays. I think we've looked at it already uh, in a previous tutorial. But once we run that, then we have this right here. So it's an array. Index zero is Dino Kajic. It tells you how you know the length of it. Um, this is an int 32, the string, another length. Um, index three is my email, it's a string. Index four is a float. And index five is a Boolean. So arrays in PHP grow based on necessity. In other programming languages like Java, you set the array length. And in order to grow beyond that length, you have to create a new larger array and copy in the smaller array. How do we add a new array element in PHP? Well, that's pretty simple too. So let's say we want to specify the occupation of this person. So person, and we'll just say because we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 indices, the next index is 6. And we'll say his occupation is author. If you want to create an element at, as the last element, so you don't have to specify, you know, the index, you can just do open, close, curly brace, and it will just automatically assign an index, and you'll see that pretty soon. So we could just say, like, okay, what did this author write? So an illustrative introduction to algorithms. So that's the book that I wrote, and I'm storing it in Array Element 7. So now let's go ahead and check the size of this array. So it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's just go ahead and copy this one. Put it down here, and we'll say size of person. If we go back, 
hit refresh underneath here we're gonna get the size of uh, the person which should be eight elements and there it is now we don't have to add an array element consecutively we can just pick an arbitrary array element and add it so, or an array index and add it so we can actually do person for example 26 is equal to right here we're going to be storing um, the link to my articles at medium so medium.com forward slash at dino kajic uh, let's go ahead and see what this person array now looks like I want to see before we continue what it looks like without the pre. Let's see if we can actually, oh, it actually looks exactly the same. I think I have some kind of extension installed that formats everything correctly. So we have the array and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is how you expected it. And then all of a sudden we have array index 26 that lists this. Let's check the size of this array. Do you think it's going to be uh, nine because it's one two three four five six seven eight nine elements or do you think uh, it's going to be 27 well let's go ahead and see so we'll copy that paste it down here hit refresh we get nine so even though this is ray element uh, index 26 uh, we still have only nine items in here but unfortunately, this means that we can't use the trick uh, we used before to get the last element in the array. So um, up, let's go back up here. What we did is we grabbed the last index, uh, which we said the count of drivers I hate, which came out to be three minus one is two. In this case, if we did that, it would be um, eight, right? And the index value unfortunately is 26 so we would not be able to, to to do the trick that we did before all right moving on how do we modify an array element so we could just say for example person now let's say we want to modify the age so zero one so person one is equal to i'll be 33 this year so person one is equal to 33. now let's go ahead and do another var dump person save it hit refresh and now if we go to the bottom of the page this should down here change from 32 to 33 and it does so what if we wanted to remove an array element well we can use the unset function so let's say that we wanted to remove an element that we created earlier uh, showing the link to my medium page and then re-add it as the last element in the function so we can use unset person 26. Oop. Come on. Nope. There we go. And then we can do another var dump person to see if it removed it as a matter of fact. So if we hit refresh, go to the bottom. There we go. Element number 26 has been removed. So I wonder what you think might happen right now if we wanted to add this as the last element and we wanted to use this little shortcut or open close bracket so if we wanted to do that like we did up here uh, we have person six is equal to author and then person open close bracket is equal to the book which gave out the seven if we look over here our last index is seven so theoretically if we do this this should be an eight right so let's go ahead and re-add that uh, medium.com forward slash add you know, Kajik. save it and then we'll do another of our dump person and see what that looks like so if we hit refresh as soon as it finishes loading we're going to go ahead scroll down and unfortunately it doesn't go to 8 it goes to 27 so what happened here it shows that the next index is 27 and not eight it was already set with our 26th uh, index blunder so my advice is not to do something like that you know don't ever just set an arbitrary 26 inside your array uh, we would have to basically fill up the array from 8 to 27 and then start using the bracket notation to automatically increment from that point on all right i think we covered enough in this tutorial we'll look at an associative array and the next tutorial and then multi-dimensional arrays after that